This video is brought to you by SRA Soldering Products. Hey everybody, it's Jimmy from the DIY and Digital, and today we are installing the Kato Multi-Switch Control Arduino project on MRR1. Welcome everybody. Today we are doing something that actually a lot of you have asked me to do, and that is to show you how I actually install these are all these Arduino projects that I do on a model railroad. And today we are installing the Kato Multi Turnout Control Project onto MRR1. So let's go ahead and get started. For this installation, we're going to be using an Arduino Nano. For the buttons, we're going to use these pre-wired buttons that I have linked in the description below. And since we need to control three turnouts with this particular setup, we're going to use two of these L298N motor drivers since they control two turnouts each. We begin with some soldering and the guys over at SRA Soldering Products sent over this all U 9378 Pro Series soldering station and I absolutely love it. I'm not gonna lie, I've never had a nice soldering iron and the even heating of this particular iron makes soldering a lot easier. SRA Soldering is actually making a soldering kit just for model railroaders and you can get 5% off when you pre-order. I have a link in the description. Some of the other things that they sent me to try out were this fume extractor, these helping hands, their very own flux, and lead-free solder, all of which I am using to solder these feeder wires to the button. Now I drill the holes for the buttons. I use a straight edge to make the holes align. I drill them with a quarter inch drill bit and you may have to make the holes slightly larger depending on the fit of the button. I then run the wires for the buttons and install them. Because it's such a snug fit, I'm able to just pop the buttons in place. Next, I install the motor drivers. I mark the holes for the mounting points and then drill the marks out. I will be using spacers for this. They are metric, so I estimate the drill size. I twist the spacers into place by hand and install the motor driver on the spacers using the provided screws from the spacers that I bought. I'll put a link to those in the description below. I then repeat the process with the second motor driver. Now I hook up the turnout wires to the motor drivers. Since I'm controlling three turnouts, one of the motor drivers will control two and the second one will only have one hooked up to it. For the motor driver controlling two, you're going to want to hook one set of wires up to outputs one and two, and you're going to want to hook another set up to outputs three and four. And for the motor driver that's just controlling one, you'll only want to hook the wires up into outputs one and two. And if you've not watched the prototype build of this, I'll link that right up here as well as in the description below. Now before I begin installing and connecting up the Arduino, I put some heat shrink on the wires and the solder points. The reason that I waited for this was because it was easier to thread the wires through without the heat shrink on them. I grouped the 5 volt wires together into a single wire and soldered them. Now I hook up 12 volt power to both of the motor drivers. Now I have a 12 volt power bus on this because I'm powering a lot of things with a 12 volt power supply. If you don't have a 12 volt bus, you can always just use a standard 12 volt power supply. I will link that in the description below as well as the bus that you see here.
I connect the wires to the motor drivers. I'm using green for the positive and white for the ground. To mount the Nano, I will be using a Nano Shield, and these things are absolutely awesome because they give you screw terminals for each one of the pins on the Nano. And I attach the Nano Shield to the board using hot glue. Before we begin wiring, let's take a look at the adjustments we'll need to do to our code to add a third turnout to it. Since I've gone through the original code in its entirety in the prototype build video, I'm just going to go through the changes that you will need to make. If you need the original code or just want the three switch code, I'll link those to be downloaded in the description below. First, let's take a look at the changes we need to make to our integer declarations. For the constant integers, you'll need to add switch 3 pin 1 is equal to 6 and switch 3 pin 2 is equal to 7. You'll also need to add button 3 equals A2. For regular integers you want to add state 3 equals 0. In our setup you'll need to add pin mode switch 3 pin 1 output and pin mode switch 3 pin 2 output. In our enumerations, you want to add st underscore straight 3 and st underscore turn 3. In our loop, we'll start off with our serial print lines. You'll need to add serial print ln, quotations state 3, and serial print ln, parentheses, state 3. You'll then need to add an integer, int, button 3 read, equals analog read, button 3. And then for more serial print ln, you'll need to add serial.println, parentheses, quotations, button 3, and serial.println, parentheses, button 3, read. Now we can head into our switch states. For each of the switch states in their parentheses, you'll need to add a button 3, read, as you can see below. You'll then need to add a case, st underscore straight 3, with switch straight 3, and case st underscore turn three with switch turn three. Now for switch off. In the integers parentheses at the top, you'll need to add int button three read. You'll also need to add two digital write lines, digital write switch three pin one low and digital write switch three pin two low. In our if then statements, you'll need to add if button three read is greater than 500 and state 3 is equal to 1, switch state st underscore straight 3. Then you'll need to add another if then statement, if button 3 read is greater than 500, and state 3 equals 0, switch state equals st underscore turn 3. The only change you need to make to the rest of the switch states is to add the int button 3 read to the parentheses at the beginning of each one. You'll also need to add two digital write lines, digital write switch 3 pin 1 low, and digital write switch 3 pin 2 low. Now we need to add the two additional switch states for the straight and turn of the third turnout. You can do this by simply copying and pasting two other switch states and doing these modifications. For straight 3, you'll want to make sure that it's void switch straight 3 and that it also has that int button 3 read at the top. Then, with the digital write commands, you'll want to switch digital write switch 3 pin 1 to high and the rest of the digital write commands to low. Lastly, you'll need to change the state value to state 3 equals 0. And now, on to the turn. We start off with void switch turn 3. 
And then of course we add the INT button 3 read in the top parentheses. In the digital write commands, you'll change digital write switch 3 pin 2 to high and the rest of the digital write commands to low. You'll then change the state value to state 3 equals 1 and that's all the code you need to do. Now for the wiring. First, we connect the 5 volt line from the buttons to the 5 volt pin on the Arduino. We then connect the white button wires to pins A0, A1, and A2. I then use 1K resistors as jumpers to the ground pin from analog pins A0, A1, and A2. To prevent any short circuits, I partially cover each one of the resistors with some heat shrink tubing. Next, I connect the VIN and ground power for the Arduino. We connect this from one of the motor drivers, it doesn't matter which. We take the 5 volt pin out of the motor driver and into the VIN pin of the Arduino, and then we take the ground from the motor driver and connect it into the ground of the Arduino. Next, it's time to connect our control pins. From the motor driver that is controlling two of the turnouts, you'll take pins one and two and connect them on the Arduino to digital pins two and three. From control pins three and four, you'll connect those on the Arduino to digital pins four and five. From the second motor shield that is controlling a single turnout, You'll take control pins 1 and 2 and connect them to digital pins 6 and 7 on the Arduino. And that's it for the wiring. We plug it in to make sure that everything turns on properly. And now we can test the turnouts. That is how you install the Kato Multi Turnout Control Arduino project onto a railroad, in that case, MRR1. I want to thank you guys so much for watching. A quick channel announcement, actually, Etsy store announcement. I haven't done one of these in a while. Uh, you guys remember designing that in scale company house? Well, I have printed it. These things are ready to rock and roll. I've got some of them up in the store. You can check that out in the link in the description below. I want to say a big thank you to SRA Soldering Products for helping me out and getting some equipment to do this tutorial properly. You can check out their pre-order model railroading soldering kit in a link in the description below and you can get 5% off if you pre-order it. And I also want to say a huge thank you to all of my patrons. They're listed right here. You can become a patron for as little as $1 a month and you can get in all the conversations that we have over there. I asked them a lot about episode ideas and they get to see sneak peeks of things that I've been recording. So go ahead and check that out if you'd like. I want to thank you all so much for watching. Until next time, I'm Jimmy from the DIY and Digital. Stay safe, be kind, and happy railroading. Yep, my hand's going. Hey, everybody, it's Jim. No. Yeah, we're going to look at that. That's, that's sharp and dangerous. Thank you guys so much for watching. It was a, no, that's, I need to think at the end so that, yeah. A miracle there aren't more i mean they're they're freaking everywhere i got buildings here i got buildings there i got buildings right here that one's actually gonna get shipped out um yeah.